Welcome to DTH channel, lecture 7 of Atomic and Nuclear Physics. This lecture is going to be about Compton scattering and photoelectric effect. These two phenomena are interaction of photons with the electrons. I am going to explain this lecture in the following way. Introduction, Compton scattering, photoelectric effect and summary of the discussion. In Compton scattering, I am going to derive the wavelength of Compton or Compton wavelength. Introduction. Scattering of photon after incident on electron is a study of important in physics. It is used in various fields uh, to understand the characteristic of photon and electron interaction. Compton scattering refers to the scattering of light of free electrons. This Compton scattering is a process whereby photons gain or lose energy from collisions with electrons. It is an important source of radiation at high energy. Photoelectric effect is the emission of electrons from a metal surface. This photoelectric effect and Compton scattering or Compton effect are two important phenomena in the field of physics. Coming to Compton scattering, this effect is the name given by physicists to the collision between a photon and an electron. The photon bounces off a target electron and loses energy. These collisions referred as elastic compete with the photoelectric effect when gamma passes through matter. This Compton scattering contributes uh, to their attenuation. This effect was discovered in the year 1922 by the American physicist uh, Arthur H. Compton. Compton received Nobel Prize for this invention in physics uh, in the year 1927. Compton demonstrated that the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation uh, plays a vital role in Compton scattering. It was a sensational discovery at the time of uh, Compton. Compton collisions can be viewed as elastic collisions between a photon and an electron. These elastic collisions become predominant when the photon energy become large compared to the energy that holds the electron in an atom that is its binding energy. For a light atom such as carbon, the Compton effect prevails on the photoelectric effect above 20 kilo electron volt. For copper, it is above 130 kilo electron volt and for lead, it is 600 kilo electron volt. Coming to photoelectric effect, emission of electron from a metal surface when it is irradiated by suitable wavelength of radiation. This is photoelectric effect. This photoelectric effect is important phenomena in the operation of solar cells. Solar cells are the modern energy sources. The efficiency of the solar cells is very important nowadays. Researchers are doing research to increase the efficiency of solar cells by using various materials materials scientists or materials researchers uh, contribute to the efficiency to increase the efficiency of uh, solar cells. First we will derive uh, the Compton wavelength, uh, then we will move to solar cells and photoelectric effect. Uh, to derive the Compton wavelength, what we need to do is we need to assume a photon and an electron. Electron is at rest mass and the photon is going to hit the rest electron. Once that photon hits the rest electron, that photon moves with different frequency or wavelength, then electron will move away and recoil. I am going to derive an expression for the shift in wavelength or shift in frequency happened in this photon electron collision phenomena. This is uh, the rest electron. This rest electron uh, is bombarded by uh, 
a photon energy of this photon is uh, h nu and uh, once this rest electron is bombarded by the photon it will uh, that photon with move with uh, different frequency from its original path then assume the angle of deviation as uh, theta this is uh, the scattered photon scattered photon and uh, this electron will recoil in a direction uh, pi from its original uh, position. So, this is the recoil angle uh, made by the electron. Coming to uh, some of the terms in this phenomena, this nu i is the frequency of the incident photon frequency of the incident photon. Then energy of this incident photon will be E is equal to h nu i is the energy of the incident photon, energy of the incident uh, photon. Next, uh, momentum of the incident photon can be obtained from P i is equal to h by lambda i. This is uh, the momentum of the incident uh, photon. Next, uh, this photon strikes the electron with the rest mass m is the rest mass of the electron. Okay. Next, uh, after incident on the rest mass uh, or electron, that photon moves with the frequency nu f, that is a final frequency of uh, the photon. So, frequency of the scattered photon. Then, energy of the scattered photon E f is equal to h nu f. This is uh, the energy of the scattered photon. Okay. Next, uh, momentum of the scattered photon P f uh, is equal to uh, momentum of uh, the scattered photon which is uh, the momentum uh, of the uh, scattered photon. As a result of collision, uh, the electron recoils at an angle uh, phi. So, this is uh, the recoil angle of electron after uh, collision. Okay. Next, due to collision, uh, that electron acquires kinetic energy K e. This is uh, the kinetic energy of the electron, kinetic energy of the electron. Then uh, P suffix e is the momentum of the recoil electron, momentum of the recoil electron. Okay. Next, uh, here this photon is assumed to exhibit a particle behavior. So, in this uh, collision conservation of energy takes place, conservation of energy, conservation of momentum uh, is also taking place, conservation of uh, energy takes place in this collision. Okay. Conservation of uh, energy means energy before collision is equal to energy after collision that is uh, the conservation of uh, energy. So, h nu i is the energy before collision because uh, the electron is uh, in rest then energy after collision this is uh, h nu f is the energy of the scattered photon plus uh, kinetic energy of the electron. 
Now, substitute uh, the kinetic energy of electron in relative strict term. So, you will get uh, h nu f plus square root of uh, m square c power 4 plus p e square that is uh, momentum of uh, the electron recoil momentum of the electron into c square minus uh, m c square. Keep this as equation uh, 1. Here <coughs> energy electrons energy is considered as uh, total energy minus rest mass energy. So, now coming to the conservation of momentum. Momentum before collision is equal to P e cos phi plus P f cos theta. Keep this as equation uh, 2. This is uh, the conservation of momentum along the horizontal direction. Here, uh, the photon scattered with some angle. So, you have to uh, resolve that into two components horizontal component and vertical component conservation uh, of uh, momentum in horizontal direction. In horizontal direction. Okay. Next like that uh, we have to write get an expression for conservation of momentum in vertical direction. So, in vertical direction there is no uh, momentum. So, you will get uh, P e sin phi is equal to P f sin theta. This is keep this as equation 3. This is uh, the conservation of momentum uh, in vertical direction. Now, to make the derivation more simpler, we are going to define three terms alpha i. This alpha i is equal to incident photon energy by incident photon energy by the electron's rest energy. Electrons rest energy, which is equal to h nu i divided by m c square. The next term uh, that we are going to define is alpha f, which is equal to scattered photon energy divided by electron rest energy. Scattered photon energy divided by electrons rest energy, electrons rest energy which is equal to h nu f by m c square. Then the third term we are in need is uh, epsilon which is equal to kinetic energy of uh, electron, kinetic energy of electron divided by the electrons uh, rest mass energy which is equal to E e by m c square. These are the three terms uh, we have defined. All the three quantities are dimensional less quantities because in the numerator you have energy term, in the denominator also you have energy term. So, all the three terms are dimensional less quantities. These three terms uh, will be substituted in the conservation of energy equation and conservation of momentum equation. The conservation of uh, after substitution it will become uh, alpha i is equal to alpha f plus square root of p e square by m square c square plus 1 minus 1. Keep this as equation uh, 4. This we got after substituting that alpha f alpha i in uh, the conservation of energy equation. Next, uh, substituting this alpha f and alpha i in conservation of momentum equation uh, alpha f cos theta plus p suffix e by m c mass of the electron and velocity of the electron 
cos phi keep this as equation uh, 5 this equation is obtained uh, from the horizontal component of velocity conservation of sorry horizontal component of momentum next vertical component of momentum sin alpha f sin theta is equal to p e by m c into sin phi this is uh, keep this as equation 6. So, we defined uh, 3 terms alpha i, alpha f, epsilon those 3 terms are uh, dimensional less terms because numerator, denominator uh, both have energy quantities. Then we have substituted these terms in uh, the conservation of energy equation and in the conservation of momentum equation. So, the equations reduced to these forms. Next, uh, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to eliminate uh, the momentum of the electron uh, and the scattering angle. So, this P e and uh, phi uh, has to be eliminated. So, to eliminate this, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to take this equation alpha i minus alpha f plus 1 is equal to square root of p e square that is uh, square of the momentum of electron by m square c square uh, plus 1. Now, from this equation we will get uh, p e square by m square c square is equal to alpha i minus alpha f plus 1 uh, the whole square minus 1. So, we got p e square by m c square. Purpose of this simplification is to eliminate p e and phi. Next what we are going to do is uh, we are going to simplify this equation further and we get uh, p e square is equal to m square c square into alpha i square minus 2 alpha i alpha f plus alpha f square plus 2 alpha i minus 2 alpha f. So, further simplification of this equation gives uh, p e square is equal to m square c square into alpha i minus uh, alpha f the whole square plus 2 into alpha i minus alpha f. Uh, so, further simplification of this equation gives uh, p e square is equal to m square c square alpha i square minus 2 alpha i alpha f 2 into alpha i into alpha f plus alpha f square plus 2 alpha i minus 2 alpha f. Now, square and add the momentum equation to eliminate uh, phi. So, we will get uh, P e by m c is e into cos pi is equal to alpha i minus alpha f into cos theta. This is obtained by square and add the momentum equation to eliminate phi. So, you will get uh, P e square cos square phi is equal to m square c square into alpha i minus alpha f cos theta the whole square. Further simplification of this equation gives sorry the next horizontal component equation p by m c into sin phi is equal to alpha f sin phi alpha f sin phi 
Now, squaring this, you will get uh, p e square uh, sin square phi p e square sin square phi is equal to m square c square into alpha f square into sin square theta sin square theta. So, from this we will get uh, p e square is equal to m square c square into alpha f square uh, sin square theta plus alpha i minus alpha f cos theta alpha f cos theta the whole square alpha f cos theta the whole square. So, further simplification of that equation gives uh, p e square is equal to m square c square into alpha f square sin square uh, theta plus alpha i square minus 2 alpha i alpha f cos theta minus 2 alpha i alpha f cos theta plus uh, alpha f square uh, into cos square uh, theta. P e square is equal to m square c square into alpha f square plus alpha i square minus 2 alpha i alpha f cos theta plus alpha f square cos square theta alpha f square cos square uh, theta. So, further simplification of this gives uh, p e square is equal to m square c square uh, al alpha f square plus alpha i square minus 2 alpha i alpha f cos theta. Comparing this uh, with our previous uh, equation of p e square, we have uh, alpha i square minus 2 alpha i alpha f plus uh, alpha f square plus 2 alpha i minus 2 alpha f. This is uh, the previously obtained expression for p e square. Now, currently obtained expression for p e square is alpha f square plus alpha i square minus 2 alpha i alpha f cos theta. Simplifying this, we will get uh, minus alpha i alpha f uh, plus alpha i minus alpha f is equal to alpha i alpha f cos theta cos theta. Okay. Next, uh, we will get further simplification of this, you will get alpha i minus alpha f is equal to alpha i alpha f into 1 minus cos theta. We have reached uh, the final form of the Compton expression 1 by alpha f minus uh, 1 by alpha i is equal to 1 minus cos theta. This is uh, the final form of uh, Compton uh, wavelength. Now, substituting the actual value of this alpha i and alpha f, uh, which is uh, alpha is equal to h nu by uh, m c square, h nu by m c square, which is equal to h by lambda m c. So, substituting this one uh, in the final form of uh, the Compton equation, we will get uh, lambda f minus lambda i, which is nothing but uh, difference in lambda wavelength, which is equal to h c by m c into 1 minus cos theta. So, the shift in wavelength when a photon incident with the rest electron can be obtained uh, by the expression h by m c into 1 minus cos theta. Here, uh, the value of h is known in Planck's constant, then m mass of the electron, c velocity of light. Substituting the values, you will get uh, del lambda 
is equal to H C by M C is approximately uh, equal to 2.42 into 10 power minus 12 meter. So, del lambda will be 2.42 into 10 power minus 12 meter into uh, 1 minus cos theta, 1 minus cos theta. This is uh, the shift in uh, wavelength uh, when a photon uh, incident with uh, the rest electron, the difference in uh, frequency is also obtained. Next coming to photoelectric effect, when a metal surface is exposed uh, to a monochromatic electromagnetic wave of sufficiently short wavelength uh, or equivalently or above a threshold frequency, the incident radiation uh, is uh, absorbed and the exposed to surface emits electrons. This phenomena is known as photoelectric effect. Electrons that are emitted in this process are called uh, photoelectrons. As I told earlier, this photoelectric effect is the important phenomena used uh, in the operation of uh, solar cells, in the operation of solar cells. Coming to uh, the production of electrons uh, or experimental verification of this photoelectric effect. Uh, coming to the experimental part of photoelectric effect, uh, this is the experimental setup to understand the photoelectric effect. Here a uh, vacuumized tube is used. In this vacuumized tube, uh, anode material is here, cathode material is here. Uh, incident light falls on the anode materials, electrons are released then cathode uh, attracts uh, the electron, then you will get uh, a current, uh, current can be measured in the ammeter. Potential difference applied between the anode and cathode uh, can be uh, seen using this voltmeter. This experimental setup was used by Hertz uh, when he was working in the antenna, when, when he was working in antenna accidentally he invented uh, this photoelectric effect. Uh, the photoelectric effect uh, is governed by four laws. The first one is it is an instantaneous process that is there is no time lag between the incident of radiation and the emission of electron. Photoelectric current produced is directly proportional to intensity of incident light and is independent of frequency. The stopping potential and hence the momentum sorry the maximum velocity of the electrons depends upon the frequency of incident light and is independent of its uh, intensity. That is uh, however intense light uh, you, you allow to fall on the material uh, only based on the frequency you will get uh, the emission number of electrons. So, the next law governing the photoelectric effect is emission of electron stops uh, below a certain minimum frequency known as uh, threshold frequency. So, this is a uh, photoelectric effect uh, ca effect can be governed by four laws. Coming to uh, the summary of the discussions we had in this lecture, we started with uh, Compton effect. Uh, effect occurred when an interaction has taken place between uh, a photon and an electron. Uh, Compton derived uh, an expression to calculate the shift in wavelength uh, or frequency between the incident photon and the scattered photon. It depends uh, purely on the angle of scattering of the photon. Then scattered photon has lower frequency than the incident photon. Then in photoelectric effect, we learnt the definition of photoelectric effect and the four laws of uh, photoelectric effect. This is how uh, this lecture helped you to learn the Compton effect and uh, photoelectric effect. Uh, you can learn more things about these concepts by surfing these websites uh, and other websites, uh, you will get more idea. Thank you.